Hello and welcome to Curious Austin Tours. Now, today I'm going to talk about Greater London. Now, before we continue, I'd highly appreciate if you subscribe and like. All right, cheerio. Now, what constitutes Greater London? There are a total of 32 boroughs plus the City of London, which in fact is officially a separate entity from the county itself, despite being bang on right in the middle. Now, the remaining 32 boroughs are divided into Inner London and Outer London. There are 12 boroughs within Inner London and they comprise the original metropolitan London since 1855. Some of the boroughs within Inner London are among the richest parts of Greater London, such as the borough, Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Central London is where all the action is and no wonder there are people from all over the world coming to visit this city and some of them even decide to stay. Within central London you can find numerous world famous attractions. There are cultural attractions and predominantly the West End which is the equivalent to theatre, top notch theatre in the Western world alongside the Broadway in New York City. Here, within central London, you can find historical as well as cultural destinations. Not forgetting, you know, the world-class restaurants here, such as the Gordon Ramsay restaurant in West London, as well as Le Roche, and numerous world-leading hotels, such as the Dorchester, Claridge's, the Berkeley, and so forth. Now, when referring to the cultural and historic aspects of central London, there are sites such as Westminster Abbey, the House of Parliament, most notably known as the Big Ben, which is in the Elizabeth Tower, Buckingham Palace, which is the London residence of our current reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, Trafalgar Square, the National Gallery. If you should venture east within central London, you'd arrive in the City of London, London's historic traditional centre. Without the City of London, there would be no London as we know it today. It all started roughly two millennia ago when the Romans settled here, what was then called Londinium. Now, other boroughs of inner London would be partly Camden, Islington, Tower Hamlets, Southwark, Lambeth, Hackney, and so forth. And the remaining 20 boroughs form a closed border around inner London. It goes like a circle around it. and. Usually that's considered outer London. Now there is one borough named Haringey in North London, which sometimes statistically is being counted as inner London and not outer London. But altogether, generally, these are 20 boroughs of outer London and they all officially became a part of Greater London in 1965, on the 1st of April 1965 to be precise. Now generally, the outer boroughs are larger in area and usually population as well, whereas the inner London boroughs are more densely populated, but smaller in area. The London boroughs, the 32 local authority districts, which make up the ceremonial county of Greater London, and they're all each governed by a London Borough Council. And now London boroughs, as we all know them now, have been formed on the 1st of April 1965 by the Government Act 1963. Now, what gives the City of London a special status is that even though it falls you know, under the jurisdiction of Greater London and of Greater London Authority, which governs the whole Greater London area, the City of London has a very special status indeed. It has its own government, its own mayor and its own independent police force. Now, the City of London Corporation, it actually operates from the Guildhall and is composed of the Law Mayor of London, the Court of Alderman, and a Court of Common Council. If you would like to learn more about the City of London, do let me know in the comments below and we'll be more than happy to create a video about it. Between 1965 and 1986, the boroughs shared power with the Greater London Council and the split of powers and functions meant that the Greater London Council was responsible for general things such as the fire services, ambulance services and such. Whereas the London Borough Councils are responsible for providing other services such as general maintenance of uh, cemeteries or social care and so forth. Now, the Greater London Council was abolished in 1986 and in between the Borough Councils gained more and more responsibility to take over duties and services. The Greater London Authority was created in the year of 2000 consisting of the Mayor of London, currently Sadiq Khan, 
is mayor since 2016, was basically the head of the executive of the Greater London Authority, but he is heavily scrutinised by the London Assembly, which consists of 25 members. But the Greater London area is vast, but the easiest way to get around within the Greater London area is by the London Underground, also called the Tube. No matter where you might live in the Greater London area, it usually would take at least half an hour, if not 45 minutes, up to one hour from point A to point B, be it going to work or even visit a friend. So that might mean even you'd have to really plan accordingly, half a day at least, to see in friend. Besides the tube, we've got numerous bus routes. Not only that, we've got boats and ships. We've got even a tram down in South London. So I've mentioned travel zones before. Let me explain you what that is. Now, Greater London is located within six travel zones. Now, zone 1 comprises central London, and each zone after that surrounds the previous one, literally forming a concentric circle outwards. Inner London, usually it is agreed, ends with zone 4, which combines parts of both inner and outer London, as well as Epping Forest in Essex, so this is basically outside of London. Zones 5 and 6 combine parts of outer London with other areas outside of London. And there you'd even have you know, the commuter belt, which continues with zone 7, 8 and 9. Now it's been lovely exploring together what constitutes Greater London. I hope you enjoyed today's video and don't forget to subscribe for more videos to come. Cheerio!